Okay, here's a good example of what we're trying to clean up. See this line right here? This is a casting flaw. This is where, this is where, when this is molded, this mold meets, evidently, right here. There's a flaw here. You can clean that up, level it out, get in there with your tool, and work that. You're going to see one identical to it on the other side. Take your carbide and just keep cleaning it up. Again, what we're doing here is keep the tool moving. Trying to get a little deeper into the cylinder, deeper in the exhaust port. Once it gets smooth, you get all your carbon and junk and casting claws out, it's a lot easier. Just follow radiuses like a little racetrack. Any of you guys got skateboards, do half pipes, same thing. Very fluid motion. As you get deeper, it's going to be harder to see. Take your time. Stay off of the ports on the inside of the cylinder. We're just working the hole right now. Okay, I've gone in with a single cut carbide and cleared that port up pretty good. Now again, it's, it's, it's still rough. I mean, there's more to be done here, but if it looks like that right now, what you're doing, you're doing a good job. That's about as clean as it has to be right now. Okay, I took my single cut carbide burr out and I put in a blue stone. Uh, that's one of these. We talked about the part number, number 82277 from Fordham, 1 8th shank blue stone. These things, they kind of get worn out, they'll get rivets, uh, divots in them little spots that just aren't going to help you make things flat. This is a wheel dresser. Um, same thing, MSC, or if you have one already, if you have a grinding wheel, you should have one of these. It gets your grinding wheel straight, but this is what I used to dress my stones, and it's how we do it. What I'm working on is just getting a nice flat surface on the side and then rounding it off at the end a little bit. Safety glasses all day long doing this. And that's it. New stone, nice finish. It's going to cut nice. Uh, no aluminum in it. Nothing like that. When you cut with this, you don't need lubricant. Don't use any lubricants on the stone. If you want to use some lubricant with the, and I don't recommend it if you're just starting out with a, with a Dremel, if you want to use lubricant when you're using the carbides, you can use kerosene or mineral spirits, it works very well. WD-40 will also work for you. It'll keep the uh, aluminum out of the flutes of your carbide. Okay, all the same rules apply with the bluestone that we used with the carbide burr. You never want to stop in one spot and sit there. You want to keep moving and you don't want to apply any pressure at all. I am going to turn the RPMs up a little bit for this stone. You don't want to run it wide open. I'm running eh, just a little bit faster. You can probably hear from the RPM. But um, we're going to go in with the stone and we're going to clean up all the marks from the carbide burr.
little divot right here. I make them too. I'm not even worried about it. Keep rolling over it. Follow your half pipe. It'll go away. Okay, I ran my bluestone through the cylinder, and let me see if I can show you this. The cylinder's flipped upside down. There it is. You can see I went in, and we talked about not touching these ports in the back. If you really look, you can see how I went right up to it, but I didn't change anything. I'm not really getting... There it is. Yep, you can see that right there, that line. That's what I'm talking about, right there. I never touched it. Came right to it. We're going to change that. We're definitely going to change it. We're going to get a little bit extra ponies out of it, but that's where you should be at right now after your bluestone. You can see it's still a little rough. Um, exhaust, what my theory is, is you should be able to see yourself in this stuff when you get done. want it to be very shiny. What that's going to do, it's going to make it almost impossible for the carbon to stick to it. It will, but it makes it a lot more difficult. Um, Airflow definitely will promote in some of the airflow, but we want this surface to be as smooth as possible. All right, we got our cylinder bluestoned out. We did our carbide, then the bluestone. The next thing I'm going to do is I got this mandrel in here. This is one eighth on this side. That'll fit your Dremel spiral mandrel, and this is one and three quarters long at the other end. What I'm going to use in unison with that is this: a spiral roll. This is a half inch spiral roll, 120 grit. It's two inches long. Uh, you don't want to. You want to get the short ones and the long ones when you get the mandrels. And you're also going to get um, cartridges, short ones and long ones, so you can get into everything. You don't want to use a short mandrel on the long wheel. You'll end up breaking it. So I'll show you how this works. Okay, here's how the spiral works. The mandrel. These are like threads. Take your cartridge roll, put it in here, lock up your Dremel. It's kind of cool, something a Fordham doesn't do. And screw it on until it gets pretty tight. Once you get it tight, you're all set. Let this go. What this does, it breaks down. This is just sandpaper that's glued together, and we're going to go in and make a better surface with this. Again, it's 120 grit, 2 inches by a half inch. We're going to go in and hit a stone surface and now we're going to really start to make things shine. Because this is so long, you don't want to put any pressure on it and you want to keep your RPMs low. And again, this is, this is as new for me as it is for you. I've never done this with a die grinder, but I'm just trying to show you you can do it. So keep your RPMs. I've got mine at absolute minimum. your anchor. No pressure. If you put a lot of pressure on it, what you're going to do is you're going to snap it off right here in the chuck. You don't want to do that. You're going to be mad. You're going to have to buy another one. Dremels do not have the torque that a Fordham does, so I'm going to actually give it up just a little bit more. What I'm doing, again, same rules. Keep moving, don't stop in one place. And you can really see how this is starting to flatten out. Long process, be patient. Again, it's like drawing. If you do tattoos, I bet you'd be really good at it. <laughs> 